Hello, and welcome to Let's Play Warhammer Quest with me, Bring It Down. A Warhammer Quest that was released in 2015 by Rodeo Games. It is a tactical RPG turn based dungeon crawler set in the Warhammer Fantasy universe. Uh, I will be playing with all the additional content included. I have the uh, deluxe edition of the game. So let's go ahead and jump on in, and I'll show you how the game is played. Um, yeah, let's, let's do hardcore. Screw it. Uh, we'll play the tutorial, because I haven't played since I played on mobile when the game first came out. So Warhammer Quest. You awaken in the depths of a dungeon. Your last memories are of an orc battle are of orc battle cries and the shouts of your companions. You must have been knocked out and left for dead. Here are more shouts coming from the gloom of the next corridor. Best go look for your companions before they get themselves killed. Alright, so this is the Marauder. Alright, when I said last time I played it was uh When it came out on mobile, I did play it for a few minutes before I started recording to make sure that it played well on PC. So Marauder is basically your was your basic warrior. Uh, down here you can see your stats, so I got to attack twice because here it said I could attack twice. I have six armor and I have uh, one range attack if I had a range weapon equipped, which I don't, so. Right now we are fighting orcs. Once you move, you can't. Well, it tells you up here. It's giving us a tutorial that I'm mostly ignoring because I remember how to play the game. So you can move and attack, but you can't attack then move. Alright, so we're going to equip this. It takes away our shield because it is a two handed weapon. And that's okay. You found one of your companions, badly wounded and surrounded by enemies. Some heavy bandages. Alright, this is a Grey Wizard. He's the only class in the game that actually has a healing spell. <laughs> Sorry, it's actually telling me to heal my wizard currently. Which we'll do after we kill this guy. <laughs> yeah, I won't worry about reading off what spells he has now because they aren't necessarily the spells that we're going to start off with um, once the game actually starts. This is just, just the tutorial, so. So if you hold it, click and hold, it'll tell you what the spell does. So Nightmare Visage, the Grey Wizard attempts to take on the form of an extremely powerful and frightening foe in the mind of the targeted enemy. There is a 50% chance of success. If successful, the enemy's chance to hit is reduced until your next turn. He also has Occam's Mind Razors. Fire three Mind Razors at the enemy. Mind razor Razors cannot miss and cause a large amount of damage, proportional to the wizard's battle level. Also, each turn, uh, there's a chance for him to get Winds of Magic back. Currently, he has three. Uh, some turns, you might get zero. It's all it's all based on luck. So yeah, you saw up here, he got ten back this at the beginning of this turn. Or he has up to ten. Now, I'm not an expert in this game. Again, it's been a few years since I've played, and I played on mobile, and I only used one party. I didn't uh, change my companions around very much. Alright, you've reached the depths of the dungeon to find the final member of your party, the Wood Elf Waywatcher. 
She is particularly skilled with a bow, so let's loose off a few arrows. Now you're not intended to win this fight. Uh, with this party and setup, I don't think that you can win this fight. I mean, you see how much health they have, and they have regeneration, and we don't really have a way to deal with their regeneration. Alright, that's the end of the tutorial. Then we get into the proper game. I think it makes us go through an actual dungeon before we uh, actually get into the, the meat of the game. So all heroes die. Eventually, inevitably. Method and character determine this land, not the march of time. Looting, indulging, mere distractions from what you crave. An idea above trinkets to last forever. A calling. A legend. Alright, uh, let's go adventuring. Alright, squashing bugs. Every adventure starts somewhere. Yours begins with the promise of gold from a mad old farmer. He seems to think the local spider populace is amassing an army to rise up and eat his crops, and possibly him as well. Your party find themselves standing at the entrance to an abandoned mine. Plot through these arachnids so we can, so we can go collect our reward. Alright, and we do start, since I have the deluxe edition, we have, um... Some legendary weapons here. I'm kind of split about using them. So we have Gotrix Axe, 11 to 15 damage, double damage on enemies of toughness 7 or higher. Uh, because Gotrix is a slayer that slayers are known for fighting monstrous enemies. Uh, she can get both sword and the bow. So we have Sunfang. Uh, 10 to 12 damage, attacks burn enemies, and we have the Reaver Bow, 11 to 13 damage. Once per dungeon, the wielder may fire a multi-shot, striking their target and other nearby enemies in line of sight. Uh, he can equip the Slayer of Kings, 10 to 12 damage, ignores toughness, devil's base attacks, a slight chance to attack friends over foes. Then our Grey Wizard, Increases spell cost by one, the Staff of Volans. Uh, there's an argument to be made that I shouldn't be using... Alright, so here's all their abilities. But yeah, there's an argument to be made that I shouldn't be using the legendary weapons, because they are very powerful. Uh, I am playing on... Hardcore, so I'm okay with it, honestly. Because uh, it wouldn't be much different with 1 to 5 damage against the enemies we're facing right now. Because they should all have 1 to 2 health anyway. So if I hit, they're dead regardless. Yeah, so we can look at their abilities. So our Grey Wizard starts with Shadow Daggers. Attack the targeted, adja yeah, attack the targeted adjacent enemy as well as anyone standing to the target's left or right. Each Shadow Bolt causes a low number of wounds proportional to the Wizard's battle level. A shadow Bolt. The Wizard throws a projectile dealing damage to the target. A chance to hit surrounding fighters for minor wounds proportional to the wizard's battle level. And healing mist, heal the targeted warrior for one to six wounds. Our, our marauder has berserk. The marauder has a chance to go berserk at the start of each turn when enemies are present or when enemies appear. There's a chance that he is unable to control himself and swings wildly, damaging adjacent warriors and preventing him from taking any actions for the remainder of turn. If he is able to control himself. He remains in a berserk state and gains one attack until the end of combat. The Marauder's chance of controlling himself increases as he increases battle level and as he kills enemies in each round of combat. Then she starts with dodge. Waywatcher is able to dodge attacks. Whenever she is attacked, she has a chance to dodge a blow so it causes no damage. Then he doesn't have anything yet. His name is Gotrix, so him having Gotrix's axe is fitting. These are the details. Oh, yeah, I'll read about all the classes. Alright, so Grey Wizards. 
Day Colleges of Magic have been uh, centers of arcane learning in the Empire for centuries. The uh, High Elves actually taught the humans how to use magic and set up the colleges with them in Altdorf. Uh, each college, also known as Orders, specializes in one of the eight lores of magic. The Great Order studies the lore of shadows, formed in the Wind of Ulgu. It is a, mag it is a magic of concealment, illusion, and trickery, lending an air of suspicion around those that practice it, namely the Great Wizards. Its reputation is often a hindrance as much as an ally, for Grey Wizards are true it itinerants. Out of all the colleges, it is the Grey Wizards who travel the furthest and therefore most likely to attach themselves to a group of wandering adventurers, even if their agendas are quite different to the Wizards' own. You can kind of compare Grey Wizards to Gandalf the Grey and how they uh, operate. Alright, then we have Karg the Mighty, and their names are... Uh, procedurally generated each time you start a new game they might have a different name so all right to the north lies the realm of chaos and its shadow are leagues upon leagues of wilderness hinterlands that are home to many different tribes of men who worship the ruinous powers the closest of those these fell lands to the empire is norska the norse are fierce barbarians usually tall and broad in stature hard bitten and warlike with a thirst for adventure the marauders who live on the southern coast of norska where the land gouges into the Sea of Claws, are the furthest tribes from the realm of Chaos, and are said to be the least favorite of their gods, and the most likely to be seen openly in more civilized lands as a result. Then Altathir, a uh, Wood Elf Way Watcher. Wood Elves are deeply suspicious and often overly hostile to all other races. Such is the distrust they jealously guard the borders of their forest kingdom, keeping the realm's hidden tracks and secret paths under constant vigil by an elite group of deadly accurate archers and master hunters known as Waywatchers. Even amongst their own kin, Waywatchers are known as solitary individuals, more at home wandering the forest under their camouflaged cow with a longbow in hand. And yet, very occasionally, a few Waywatchers will form a desire, be it a stirring of their heart or even a personal quest entrusted to them by Queen Ariel, to search beyond the Wood Elf realm of Athol Lorne and seek out other places and beings that may need their protection. Then Gultric Stonebrow, a dwarf Ironbreaker. Like all dwarves, Ironbreakers are bearded, proud, and short, but what they lack in height, they make up for a stocky, muscular build, perfectly suited for swinging large war axes and cleaving through goblin heads in enclosed spaces. They excel at such things as that is the prime duty of an Ironbreaker. They are armed, armored, and trained to guard the lower tunnels and crucial underground entrances to the last surviving dwarf strongholds, or sorry, dwarf holds, Magnificent, ancient, underground fortresses that are now remnants of a crumbling empire. When not tasked with such a sacred duty, an Ironbreaker is a great asset to any band of adventurers, as their experience in combat amidst the close confines of a dungeon passage cannot be matched. Alright. So let's boogie woogie. The footsteps are awfully loud. Alright, in we go. And there's nothing here. And uh, with the Deluxe Edition, you do get more classes, uh, but we don't have access to them until after we finish this first dungeon. All right, five giant spiders. Alright, so Death Blow allows you to keep attacking as long as you keep killing. But not, it doesn't trigger every time. I don't know what the actual percentage chance is for it to trigger. So I'm, posi I'm positioning her here because she has one ranged attack and one melee attack. So I can melee attack this guy, kill him, then range attack this guy. And we got leather armor plus one toughness. And who might that benefit? I think only the Marauder can wear it anyway. All right, then end our turn.
Yeah, a lot of uh, items in the game are either class or race specific. Like firebombs can only be used by dwarves. But there's a couple of different dwarf classes that we'll we'll have access to after this dungeon. Now you do have a chance of being ambushed every time you uh, stop. Or every time you end your turn, there's a chance of you being ambushed, so... Just because you don't see enemies, doesn't mean you're safe. Sorry, I had to scratch my ear. Alright. Also, with the uh, Deluxe Edition, you get more enemy types and more dungeons. Uh, I think there's, like, the Undead pack or vampire pack or something, and something else. Alright, uh, maybe the old farmer wasn't as mad as you previously thought. Calling the spider horde an army might be a stretch, but he was right. There are a lot down here. From the looks of this room, it's only going to get worse. Four giant spiders and five giant rats. So you want to take out the spiders first because they have the uh, when the, if they if they hit you they'll trigger like a web ability that prevents you from acting and that's no good. So yeah, right there. He won't be able to act this turn. I can select him, but he can't do anything. Alright, that's it for this dungeon. Got a small bandage. And experience is based on who kills what. So they don't just share experience, they have to actually participate in the, uh, in the combat. Alright. Well... Well done. You made it out of your first dungeon in one piece, more or less. Now let's get to the nearest settlement, Siegfriedhof, uh, to spend your hard-fought earnings. Click on a settlement, then press the travel button on the settlement card to move there. I received 50 gold. Alright, so here you have so many quests per region. Uh, we're currently in Sterland. And then after you complete all the quests, all like the, the white quests, uh, there will be a black quest that you have to complete. And that's like the final quest for each region. All right. You can sell and buy loot in settlements, level up heroes, and all manner of other activities. Select a warrior in the central carousel, then use the locations button in the middle pane to send them off into town. Warriors may experience all sorts of events when sent to locations. When you're ready to start adventuring again, just hit the go adventuring button. However, it appears someone wishes to speak to you first. The Miserable Minstrel As the adventurers approach Siegfriedhof, they spy a lonesome figure sat upon the two-league waystone to the town. Your party is wisely cautious. The man sees you coming, but doesn't seem to care. Closer inspection reveals him to be wearing the garb of a minstrel. I suppose you're going to rob me, he says with a dour expression on his face. Not having much use for a beaten up instrument or his rags, you ignore the minstrel and move on towards Siegfriedhof. Not, not thieves then, he shouts after you. But I bet you like riches all the same. Did he say riches? Your party pauses. Ah, that's got your attention. He jumps off the waystone and smiles for the first time. I know where there's a hoard, you'll, you see. A pile of gold and jewels stolen by bandits. So, same bandits stole my loot. Not this old thing, but an instrument of pure beauty. 
encased in silver and inscribed in a most wondrous fashion. So I'll guide you to the dungeon. You clear all the creatures and keep the treasure, but the loot is mine. Meet me outside Siegfried Hof when you're ready. Alright, so we can get to the market, we can do some selling, some buying. I can sell most of this stuff, because I don't plan on using it necessarily. Alright, but we can look at all of the classes we have. So as we've seen, we have the Iron Breaker, we have the Way Watcher, the Marauder, and Grey Wizard. That's your base party. Uh, we also have a Dwarf Troll Slayer, which is a Slayer, a Warrior Priest, an Archmage, or an Archmage, a uh, Bright Wizard, Shadow Warrior, Ogre Iron Gut, and a Witch Hunter. Witch Hunter is very, very, very good, um, especially in dungeons involving the undead. He's got abilities that just shred the undead. And you can also go to the Adventurer's Guild. Which I guess you... I'm not entirely sure what the Adventurer's Guild is for. I guess to hire people if you don't have them yet. And when you get to the training grounds, if you have enough experience to level up, you can come here to level up. Oh, look at that. A random event. Oh, there's a traveling circus in town, and your warrior spends the rest of his day wandering from sideshow to sideshow. Having met the bearded woman and the two-headed goat, he decides to have his fortune read. Perhaps a sign above the door to that particular wagon should say, Have your fortune stolen. As for the cost, he warriors told nothing more than, his, than that his destiny lies with a tall, dark stranger from Erengrad. And they took my money. I can also go to the temple and get a random blessing. It costs money. And it lasts, I think, only through the next dungeon. Leaving most of their gold carefully stashed away in the tavern, your warrior goes out on the town. As they cross the street, they spot an old crone in an upstairs window shouting that robbers have broken into her attic room and are stealing her few possessions. Happy to assist the helpless, they bound up the rickety stairs to her room three at a time. As they enter her dimly lit room, a black bag is placed over their head, swiftly followed by a heavy iron bar. They awaken in the gutter several hours later, nursing a sore head. Not surprisingly, the gold they were carrying has all gone. And I've lost more money. Alright, time to go adventure. I quests are an adventurer's bread and butter. Completing white ones will open up new sections of the world map. Quests belonging to the settlement you are in are colored red. For example, the miserable menstrual you just bumped into town can be found at the red dungeon just to the west. These are tough, but yield better rewards. Good luck. See, whenever you go to town and leave, you'll have a couple of quest options, sometimes three or four instead of just two. And you can see which rewards you get. So here we get the Vestment of Shadow. Decreased chance to be hit with a melee weapon, plus one toughness. Only for the Great Wizard. And here I think the rewards are always the same. Uh, we'll go through this dungeon real quick before we go to the story dungeon just to showcase it. And for the sake of this dungeon, I will be bringing um, the Witch Hunter because we are fighting undead. Alright, the Dungeoneers are welcomed into the Lone Coaching Inn by the few locals and a skeleton staff. The innkeeper seems genuinely pleased to see fresh faces, and once drinks are served, is more than happy to eulogize the region in a blatant attempt to get repeat custom. Of most interest in your party is this tale of a powerful armor known as the Vestments of Shadow. It is said to be hidden under some fell ruins shunned by the locals. Fertile ground for your fortune seeker for your fortune seekers to tread. There we go. Yeah, so he has Bane of the Undead, or Bane of Undead. Damages the targeted undead enemy for five to eight wounds. This damage increases with the Witch Hunter's level. So I'm not going to do a lot of these side dungeons on camera. I'm mostly going to focus on quest ones. This will be the, probably the only one I actually show on camera. And if there's items that I want, I'll pursue those on my own time. Just to keep the story moving forward. All 
All right, giant spider. Six of them. So he is also, just like the Way Watcher, he has a melee and a ranged attack. He has a pistol instead of a uh, bow and arrow, of course. All right, Amethyst, so some treasures are just treasures you, you can sell. They don't have a purpose. Also, we haven't read about the Witch Hunter. So we've read about the uh, Bane of the Dead ability. All right, heresy and the practice of unsanctioned wizardry are rife within the Empire, but those that dare employ fell sorcery or consort with the Dark Gods must answer to the Witch Hunters. To say a witch hunter is a stern individual is not to fully comprehend the full, or the, sorry, the true unyielding nature hidden behind their cold, judging eyes. Even the innocent should right, rightly fear their gaze, for chaos can hide behind even the most gentle of hearts. To combat such evil, a witch hunter is armed with deadly and exotic weaponry from files of fey tears, holy talismans, and protective charms to weapons of more practical application, such as sword and pistol. On the face of it, it may seem strange that a warrior with such puritanical beliefs would ally themselves to fortune seekers delving in the dark, but it is into the darkness that witch hunters wish to tread, as the greatest evils, the foulest of heretic or heresies, lie in wait, hidden within the dungeons of the old world. Oh yeah, his pistol also has a chance to jam uh, free every time he uses it. But it can become a very potent weapon. Because one of his accessories he can equip is uh, upgraded bullet types. Alright, two skeletal militia and three skeleton archers. So I can use Bane of the Undead on this guy. It should just kill him. This is what makes him so good against Undead. And dead. That's it. Uh, Waywatcher Amulet plus one toughness. Equipped to the Waywatcher. And that's what she already has. Uh, plus one max wounds. We'll do that instead. Alright, so we've been ambushed. He has no magic, so we're just going to have to take these hits, if they even hit. <laughs> Alright, plus three toughness, a consumable item. Alright, encounter. This room is covered in strange ooze that clings to the walls and ceiling of the chamber. As the party enters, the ooze trembles slightly, as if sensing the change in air pressure of the body heat of the intruders. Within seconds, the ooze is slid off the wall and solidified into one amorphous mass in the center. It lunges at Magnus Wolfheart, 
attacking what it perceives as the greatest threat. The warrior breaks free of the ooze, but has been partially ingested in the process. Even as it spatters across the room, the party can see it starting to run together and start to reform its true mass. Better move on. Probably gonna get ambushed in here again because it's taking us so long to cross the uh, the darn room. Yep, son of a gun. The rest of them spawn back there. <laughs> he says any wins of magic. Fine. I'm rambushed again, so this can happen and it's not very exciting. But it's a bunch of extra experience, so it's not the end of the world. You also get gold for every kill. There we go. Finally. Let's proceed. <laughs> yeah, some of these dungeons can get pretty nasty because enemies just won't stop spawning. I do have healing mist, but I can't cast it. So what I'll do is I'll use small bandages on him since he is on the front line. Six giant rats. Awesome. Plus one power at minus one toughness for the Grey Wizard. I'm going to give that to him. Since he really should be on the front line anyway. Alright, the Vestments of Shadow. The outfit has been placed upon a wooden dummy at the far end of the room. Even from this distance, the warriors note the resplendent nature of the Vestments of Shadow, and the powerful nature of its design. Between your party and the armor is a large mob of vicious monsters, each one insatiable, each one with insatiable blood lust in their eyes. Like eight skeletons, no biggie.
Let me just start popping off with Bane of the Undead. No big deal. Yeah, he's gonna probably clear out this entire room by himself, which is pretty bananas. There we go. <laughs> And that's why the witch hunter- oh, there's a guy right in front of him. My bad. <sighs> Alright, 100 gold, and we got the Vestments of Shadow, which we'll give to the Great Wizard. <laughs> I mean, that's just, that's bananas. Right, we're gonna go back to town. I want to level up the, uh, the witch hunter real quick. Don't need to watch this again. Alright, so strength went up by four, or sorry, by one, wounds went up by four. And he gets Dirty Blow, which is an invocation. Strike the targeted enemy with a Dirty Blow. The attack ignores armor, but the Witch Hunter's strength does not count toward the damage caused. Alright, we can go to the market and sell. We also buy stuff. What's hell hard do? Once consumed, damages all enemy magic users in line of sight. Ooh, sounds good. I right, bet we can sell this and cave herbs, amethyst. that on him. Alright. Uh, next episode, we might open up by reading about some of these other classes. And uh, I'm going to try to mix it up in each quest. We'll do something different. Alright, so what's the one for this shadow scale? Which is for who? The shadow warrior. Plus one toughness and one wounds per turn. So it heals him per turn, which is very good. And I might do that off camera, and then uh, afterwards we'll do this one. But anyway, I'm going to call it here. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next episode.